to head couriers. The 2011 APSA Off-Road Championship was packed with action and drama. After eight grueling events throughout South Africa and neighboring Botswana, both the production and special vehicle championships were decided at the last event of the season. And the year was capped by superb performances by South African teams at the Dakar Rally in South America. Going into the 2012 season, the APSA Off-Road Championship is the jewel in the motorsport South African crown, with MSA Off-Road Car Racing Commission President Richard Schilling looking forward to another exciting year ahead. Yes, uh, we start off with success of uh, the South African teams at the Dakar. We uh, have new vehicles coming in, we have revised BMWs, new Nissans, new Ford vehicles, and of course the Toyota vehicles that competed in the Dakar. So the production side looking exciting, and uh, over and above those we've got the privateers who really shook the works teams as such up towards the end of last year, so I think uh, the production side of our championships is really going to be great. In terms of the frames, we've got uh, some good changes. We've got people moving up from Class B to Class A, people moving from old vehicles to new vehicles. Uh, there I include the motorite team and uh, the Fareed team from the Free State. So uh, overall, um, it's looking good. Um, I'm sure we'll have more people at the first event, and uh, the championship, I believe, will be as uh, exciting as it has been in the past. The MSA Off-Road Car Racing Commission has a vision for the future, which includes professional and business-like administration and expanding South Africa's international links and participation. Yes, um, re really our, our, our trend and our, and our vision is to, to run um, our sport in this country on a world-class basis and to make it uh, really uh, the, the area where people can be trained to, to compete one, uh, down the line at the top international events in off-road racing. The South African flag was proudly waved at the Dakar Rally by the Imperial Toyota team with a podium finish for Janil de Villiers and German co-driver Dirk von Zitzkowitz. Glenn Hall was the mastermind behind the Imperial Toyota success and is bullish about the future of South African off-road racing. Well, I think the National uh, Championship, APSA Off-Road Championship, is in great shape. I mean, we're going to have even more cars. If I look at the, uh, the, the vehicles that are available than we've ever had before, we've got a great lineup of talent. And uh, moving closer to the international scenario is just only going to help us. We've, uh, we've got lots of people phoning us, talking to us about wanting to go to DECA or do what we did so we can help them there. And I think that's really healthy. And uh, for sure, we have got the strongest championship in the world, and uh, that doesn't come easily. It's going to be another busy year for Glen Hall's company, Hall Speed. A new car will be built for the Castrol Toyota team, and there are also international orders for Toyota Hilux race vehicles. During the year, we will build a new car um, and, and test it on some of the uh, events. I won't say when that car is going to debut. We're, we're having a look at a lot of different aspects. We're, we're busy just finishing a car which will be sold off into Europe at the moment. That'll leave uh, within the next two weeks. So there's plenty of pressure here as well, ready for the new season, new cars. We've got some testing, shakedown. Duncan's had lots of practice, of course, but uh, Anthony's a bit rusty, so we've got to get him up to speed. After the Imperial Toyota success on the Dakar Rally, there'll be a high level of expectation for Team Castrol Toyota in this year's APSA Off-Road Championship. The winds of change will also be blowing through Team Ford. The worldwide launch of the new T6 Ford Ranger will see Ford Racing in South Africa also building a new car to be unveiled later in the season. Ford Racing were the first team to turn to diesel power in South African off-road racing and the new T6 Ford Ranger provides Ford Racing principal Neil Woolridge and his team with a new challenge. I think for Ford Motor Company it's, it's a big year. Uh, we're launching the new T6 Ford Ranger which is very exciting, not only for South Africa but for the whole world. So it's uh, very exciting for us on the racing side as well and also on the global um, side of things. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting year for Ford Motor Company and especially for Ford Racing in South Africa. We, uh, we're building the new T6 Ford Ranger, which uh, we hope to have ready for the third race or the fourth race this year. Uh, it's a whole new project for us, completely new concept, uh, new design, completely new car. 
One aspect of Team Ford that won't change this year is the crew lineup, which will again feature a combination of youth and experience. Former South African champions Chris Visser and Yafi Bardenhorst will again link up with youngster Lance Woolrich and former Class E champion Ward Huxtable. We're going to stay with our, our same setup. Uh, Chris and Yafi have done a great job. Uh, we're leading the championship going into the last race. I don't think you can ask for too much better than that. Unfortunately, we had a a major uh, problem in, in the last event of the year, so we end up not winning the championship, but uh, they did really, really well. And then we've got Lance and Ward, uh, who's part of our bringing young people into the sport campaign, and they've also had a, an excellent year, having two podium finishes, a second and a third. Uh, their first year in the SP class, which I think is really great. And we, we need to nurture young people and bring them into the sport, uh, to have 50-year-olds and 40-year-olds, uh, that type of thing, racing. We need to bring the young teenagers and, and 20 year olds into the sport. So that's part of Ford Motor Company's uh, not only local strategy but global strategy as well. Apart from the two factory entries for Chris Visser and Yarpi Bardenhorst and Lance Woolrich and Ward Huxtable, the Ford Challenge will this year be bolstered by a number of privateer teams all running ex-works cars. <laughs> There'll also be a facelift for the Regent Racing team with two new SP Class Nissan Navaras on order. Regent Racing is planning an assault on the 2014 Dakar Rally. Um, in 2012, we, we, it's a year where we're very much gearing up for the Dakar. Our goal is Dakar in 2014. In 2014. So in 2012, we, we, we're producing two new cars, which is really a, a short wheel-based V8 uh, Nissan Navara to the new FIA specs. So that'll be Dakar and FIA approved. Um, those two cars uh, will be, be ready by the third and fourth event of the year. So a kind of uh, a year of development for us. You know, the first couple of races will be using the, uh, the older cars, the V6s, before moving across to the V8s. Um, by the second round of the championship, we'll bring in a third car. That third car will run under SA Warranties, which is a division of, of Regent Insurance, um, with a, a completely different marketing angle to it, which will be great. The car will be run by and driven by Archie Rutherford. Uh, um, but will include uh, celebrity and, and, and businessman um, um, uh, drives, uh, which really will come and fulfill the role as a navigator in our nationals, um, and really just to market and bring people uh, uh, some insight into this, uh, this wonderful sport. There'll be an extra string to the BMW bow this season. There's no change to the two-car retirement fund solutions team, but a third BMW X3 is being built for the Rustenburg father and son team of Willem and Dana Foss. Uh, the drivers are still be Hannes and uh, Henrik de Stiege and Christian, my son, and uh, Henk uh, Janssen van Vieren. Uh, Willem Voss is also driving a BMW X3. Uh, we hope that it will be finished at, uh, for the beginning of, uh, of the season at the RFS event, but we'll see. The RFS Machalis 400 was voted best event of 2011, and Hannes Grobler and Henrik de Stiege will aim for back-to-back -back wins when the race kicks off. No, we will hope that it's going to be a very good season for us. The cars are exactly the same now. They've got uh, the 4.8 motors in now. We've uh, taken out the, the M3 motor from Christian's car. We feel that the 4.8 is much better, low down torque and so forth. We had a test session at Barberspan and it went very, very well there. The Atlas Copco team will this year again run cars in both the production vehicle and special vehicle categories in the APSA Off-Road Championship. Team leader Gary Bertolt has always been a strong believer in the marketing benefits the APSA series offers teams and sponsors. Bertolt is also a vocal supporter of the role privateer teams play in South African off-road racing. Well, my view has always been with the privateer teams being out there, they are the backbone of the APSA off-road series. The exposure that the companies that sponsor the teams are able to get is phenomenal. It's a fantastic platform where companies can get great returns. Hence the support that we get from the big companies. The APSA off-road series has proven to be one of the most successful forms of motorsport at the moment. And the, the teams that are being sponsored and the sponsors that are coming in are definitely getting the value. So. We understand that uh, without all those guys, we don't have a sport, and we really are grateful to all of them for what they contribute. The Atlas Copco flag will be flown by Johan van Staden, a new co-driver Mike Lawrenson in the special vehicle category, and Bertolt will also have a new co-driver in the production vehicle category. My recipe for the season is most certainly the tortoise and the hare. I think, as I've always said, with age comes experience. I will have Ralph Pitchford with me for seven of the eight events for the year. We've done a regional event together. We're just gonna go slowly one step at a time, one point at a time, 
eat this elephant for this championship. And hopefully, with the support of Atlas Copco, Gem Sport, we're going to give it a great go for the championship. Northwest province farmers Yanni Fisser and Jox LaRue struck another blow for privateer teams when they won the 2011 Production Vehicle Championship in the International Truck Toyota Hilux. At the start of the year, you could have named your new odds against the pair winning in the championship, and they didn't win a race all season. The experienced Visser and LaRue highlighted the importance of consistency in winning championships. On the range pond, you must die here. On the end, you must die here. This is all about the range pond. And a good camaraderie between the driver and the navigator. This is more what the range pond is. And the people who are car for the ride. Dit is zeker nummer 1. Dit is wat die wenspan maak. For Yanni Fisser and Jox Leroux, winning the championship has also brought other benefits which are a major boost as they prepare for the new season. Man, ja, ons het dan een goeie borg gekry by RFS en by International. Hulle het nou ons mooi gehelp vir die jaar wat kom. So ons hoop ons kan officiele trant aangaan wat ons die jaar geëindig het. For the Baden racing pair of Thomas Rundle and former South African champion Juan Moore in the X Factory Nissan Navarra, the 2011 season was a roller coaster of ups and downs. Despite the mix of highs and lows, Rundle and Moore were in the championship mix right up until the final event of the year. Yeah, look, yeah, we, we, we started off well. Um, you know, we had two second places and then, and then it sort of went all pear shape. And, um, we had a chance going into the last race to win the championship and uh, you know we had field pressure problems which, which we've addressed and, and hopefully won't, won't experience it again. And yeah, really it's just to get that consistency going, make sure that we're in the points in the first couple of races and then you know maybe in the second half of the championship really push hard for, for one or two wins. The Pretoria-based Barden Racing team has resisted the trend to switch to V8 power in 2011, but Thomas Rundle and Juan Moore will be aiming for greater consistency throughout what will be another tough season. Yeah, look, I think last year a lot of guys were in development phase. Um, obviously, you know, Toyota Stake for one, for example, we're in development phase, we went to Dakar and really blew everybody away. So the, the competition is going to be tough. Some guys are coming out with new cars. I think a lot of guys have gone the V8 route. We haven't. Um, but yeah, it's going to be competitive. Motorsport is a constantly evolving industry and a new season inevitably brings new players and reshuffles amongst the old guard. The popular 4x4 Mega World 400 will be back at Carnival City this year, along with a change of direction for the 4x4 Mega World team. After much deliberation, a decision has been taken to again run cars in two classes in this year's production vehicle championship. Okay, it's taken us long to make a decision. Um, our biggest decision, we wanted a V8 for the year. Unfortunately, Glenn won't be finished in time. So we're coming back, my son back in the Class D, my car of last year. And then we got hold of a, a, a multi-valve um, V6 for this year. We bought from one of the older guys. So that's our plans at the, at the moment, so that we're going to run with uh, Class D and uh, older SP. Youngsters Jason Fenter and Vincent van Alleman were the 2011 Rookies of the Year and represent the Young Lions in off-road racing. Moving into Class D is a step up the ladder for the pair of teenagers, but for young Fenter's father, a dream fulfilled would be to win his own event. Well, it's always exciting to be sponsor of one of the events. Um, we've been sponsoring the old Carnival event for two years now. Um, we're in for it at this stage, so I think, uh, yes, we'll be racing there. We always try to, we want to win it. So hopefully we'll have a V8 SP to try and win it. I've always, that's been my dream to win our own um, sponsored race. A string of privateer entries add impetus to the Premier SP class. Rubicon Racing Field, a four-car team with the two SPs of Piki Labas Kochni and Rikus Erasmus, the standout performers in 2011. Malcolm Koch and Johan Berger and the Mike Karen XL entry of Hugo de Brain and Henry Hugo bolster the Toyota lineup with the Ford Challenge boosted by the Unifreight Ford Ranger of Kurbis van Tonne and Freddy Krill. Willem and Dana Foss will switch camps from Toyota to BMW with former Class D champions Diebel van Breda and Johan de Toy back in action in the Potch Plastics Toyota Hilux. 
Back for a second year in national competition will be Pretoria businessman Henny de Klerk and Keith Solomon in the LA Sport Toyota Hilux with Graham and Trevor Beek campaigning in the Transcore Ford Ranger, which was the first SB class car built by Ford Racing in Peter Maritzburg. Reigning Class D champions Jack and Sorrel Oersteisen will be back in the dependable Land Rover with competition from two N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruisers campaigned by Louis and Cliff by Gelt. While battles will resume in Class E between Diederik Hutting and Vic Saliers in the Transcore Toyota Hilux and Dirk Pitter and Chris Klaassens in the Siswe Toyota Hilux. knows just too well that a victory is never claimed before crossing the finishing line so the Frenchman took zero risks with a 42 minute lead overall he just focused on keeping his mini on all four wheels and not making any mistakes Stefan Pederhansel wins the 2012 Dakar his fourth in a car his tenth after claiming the rally six times on a bike you slept with my best friend. How was my husband? Was he good? Hello. It's a new day. Just God. I want to take you now. We have 10 minutes. I'm lawful. You're sleeping with his wife. Is there something I should know? Season 3 of The Good Wife, Mondays at 8.30 on Mnet and Mnet HD. The Good Wife, proudly sponsored by Samsung. This March, on your world of champions, Mzanzi's Giants need to watch their backs in the Nedbank Cup. Vettel, Hamilton and Massa return in a new season of Formula One and feast your eyes on some awesome Southern Hemisphere rugby. This March, the Nedbank Cup, Formula One, Vodacom Super Rugby, SA Tour to New Zealand, Six Nations and the Domestic T20 Challenge. In April, SA's best are back at Augusta. Catch all the action in HD. The checks have been signed, and now it's time to watch some cricket. And the doctor will look to get back to winning ways in MotoGP. In April, the Masters, Indian Premier League, and MotoGP. In May, the Kings of Europe get crowned in the UEFA Champions League. Get closer to the clay courts of Roland Garros. And it's anyone's title as the ABSA Premiership draws to a close. In May, the UEFA Champions League. Roland Garros and the Absa Premiership, live on Supersport. A long-term association with principal sponsor Absa Vehicle and Asset Finance is the rock around which the success of South African off-road racing has been built. With Absa's backing over the last decade, the Absa Off-Road Championship has been accepted as the most competitive domestic championship of its kind in world motorsports. 2012 marks the 10th year of Absa's involvement with off-road racing in South Africa, and we are proud of the development that has gone into the sport and of the elevation of its profile among the media, the watching public and the participants alike. We believe that it is a very well managed facet of motorsport in South Africa and we are proud that the success of South African drivers at the recent Dakar rally have been credited to their involvement with the series uh, in the past. Any successful venture requires the collective effort and commitment by all involved and I would like to thank all stakeholders and our partners for the collaboration and teamwork that they put into off-road racing each year to ensure that it reaches new highs. We'd like obviously to wish the participants well for 2012 and hope that they have a successful and rewarding year. The Donaldson Prologue, which decides start positions for APSA off-road races, has added a new dimension to the championship. The Prologue concept has also cemented a strong bond between off-road racing and Donaldson Filtration Solutions. Well, I think it's exciting, and the fact that we want to be involved for a third year just shows we have confidence in the association and where the sport's going. The brand proposition works for us. If you just uh, um, tied in with, with, with the Donaldson products. We know we've got good products. We're synonymous with quality uh, and performance. And 
this is the exact environment we're looking for to, to take it to that, to that level. So we know we're getting good brand awareness. It's really a case of taking it to get additional brand equity and making sure people understand that uh, we've got a myriad of products to offer and we want to add, uh, add value by providing filtration solutions and not just products. And you know that, that in terms of the entire uh, brand and, and, and what Donaldson means out there is important to us and it's getting that message out. And so it's a great platform to do that. In 2011, the Special Vehicle Championship also went all the way to the wire. After a shaky start and mid-season wobble, the father and son team of Hermann and Richard Sorvalt in the Sorvalt Racing Quarter clinched the title in the final event of the year. It's always um, a title to defend, and, uh, but we, we're looking forward to the year. We, we hope to have a better start than last year. So um, we, we think the car is well prepped. We've done a lot of work on the car and uh, we're happy to, to start this season more comfortable than last season. After succeeding brother Kali and cousin Quinton Sulwalt as South African champions, Herman and Wichart will this season also be part of the elegant field stable, which is now very much a family unit. Sponsors are backing us again and some, uh, some really great news with Herman and Wichart joining our team, uh, becoming one team on the elegant field, so really looking forward to that. Bigger, better, hopefully 2012 will be a good year for us again. For most of the season, 2010 champions Cully and Quinton Sulvalt set the pace in the Special Vehicle Championship in the elegant fuel bat. A seventh place on the final event would have given them back-to-back -back championships, but an electrical problem blew them out of the water. Herman and Wichard are really great competitors. I mean, they showed last year coming back, winning the championship. Uh, so definitely one of the two best combinations out there. To be in one team, fantastic. I mean, you can't, for, for the sponsors and for our family, you can't ask for anything better. On the personal front, the motorite team remains the same with former South African champion Evan Hutchison and Donnie Stassen and the father and son combination of Nick and Ryan Harper doing duty. On the vehicle front, it is all change. We're on the same team as we did last year. Uh, myself and Donnie, uh, we'll be campaigning a new Bat Venom, which we're trying to finish uh, desperately. Um, and Nick and Ryan will be joining us. They've sold their Spec 4 um, at the last minute, so they're going to be campaigning Revo until their Bat Venom is ready. The experienced Hutchison was also a part of the driver championship mix last season and is under no illusion about the task ahead of championship hopefuls this season. Yeah, it's always good, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of fast drivers out there, a few people have changed around um, from driver to navigator. We've got um, some new people into class A and big cars, so um, it's always going to be tough, you know, it's not necessarily the fastest guys out there, it's always the clever guys and the guys who prep their cars well. It's an endurance sport, so it's, it's the guys that are, are left racing at the end of your 400 kilometers, not necessarily the fast cars. So it's never been easy. I've never seen an easy year. You know, it's always tough. It's, it's just never been easy. So. Tough it will be, but with a new car, Hutchinson will go into the season with high expectations. There'll also be high expectations for another of South Africa's Dakar heroes with Mark Corbett and Francois Jordan finishing 24th in the Century Racing CR4. Corbett will link up with race engineer Julian Hardy, who designed and built the futuristic CR4. Yeah, it's a new season for us. Obviously, we've had a lot of testing at Dakar. So our car's done 9,500 k's without too many hassles. So this year, from a reliability point of view, should be quite easy for us. But you know, saying that, racing is always a big leveller, so we're not expecting to finish anything, but I think we stand a good chance this year. The Century Racing team will this season again run a CR3 for Class P flyers Colin Matthews and Alan Smith. Watching his son on the Dakar also reignited the racing bug for Corbett's father, Ernest, who will make a comeback in his 60s to take on the youngsters. Yeah, this year it's going to be myself in the CR4 to race the Dakar. It's going to be Colin Matthews in his car, as well as my dad's going to be racing again a few races. He's resurrected his car. He decided that it's not okay for us to have all the fun, so he's coming back. And then my brother-in-law will also campaign the car for some of the races.
The Himan Auto 400 last season was a big moment for Marius and Yolinda Furi, who joined the small band of Class P crews to win a national event overall. Fired up by that success, the husband and wife team have bought the X Harper bat and move into Class A this season. Yeah, nee, but we sit in the Kabers Karkup, so we are going to be here at Class P this year and see how it goes. We have new, new days, so we are going to see how it goes. After graduating from regional racing, the Ferries quickly made their mark in Class P, with Yolinda also adding a touch of glamour to the race paddock. Yeah, nee, baie. My first learning in GPS was to bestaan and gemakkelijk te raak met alles. So we'll see. For the Ferries, the step up into Class A moves them into the big time on the national stage, with the pair relishing the challenge that lies ahead. I think it can be a great step. The car is a little different to the rest of the race. Als wij meer krachten slaan bij deze karakter, en de kutten zijn inspeek zeer en inspeek voor ons, dat is een groot verschil tussen de rijen en van alle. Also on the move are veteran Kutsia Labaskakhni and his daughter Sandra, who shift from Class B to Class P in the race Sonic Zarko. Class B caters for six-cylinder power units, and the category last year provided the overall winners on three Absa Off-Road Championship events. We decided to upgrade our car from a Class B to a Class P, so uh, we have two more cylinders there, and uh, which we hopefully will create a little bit more fun. But it's also a very competitive class. There's some uh, seriously quick guys there, and uh, we'll see how it'll go there. Studying for a master's degree in veterinary science, Sandra is also looking forward to the challenges provided by a step up in the class. Well, we're actually very excited because of Firstly, it's got more entries in the class than class B, so that's a new challenge for us. And then secondly, a challenge would be to come to grips with the new engine, new power, new car totally, so that's another challenge, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Class A challenges this season will include the Free State-based uh, Rubicon Racing bats of uh, Peter Rathven, a new navigator Shaw van Heerden and David and Gary White. Guazula Natal pair Clint Gibson and Gary Campbell, Northwest pair Neil Mayer and Leon Muller in the interesting Sarko Challenger. The Popo based Naeem Musaji and Rayon Bodhanya and veteran Nardis Alberts will again team up with San Louis in the Ratsa Bats. Dion Boyens and Kubis Ferri will return for a second year of national racing, along with Daniel and Lo Zili in the Orange Works Porter and Steve Parker and BZ Van Sale teaming up in the Caesar Nani Plastics Jimco. This season will also see a return to action for Lawrence and Jara Duplessis and Republic of Congo based brothers Eduardo and Ricardo Argazi. On the Class P front, Nick Gosler and Andrew Massey return for another year in the Men's Health International Zarco. And brothers Keith and Andrew Macanetti will also make the switch from Class B. A full APSA season kicks off with the RFS Michalis 400 again based at Talton International Raceway near Krugersdorp. Next up are the Toyota Dealer 400 in Pumalunga and the KZN 400 which switches from the Midlands battlefields to the sugarcane fields of Richmond. The KZN race is followed by the Toyota 1000 Desert Race in Botswana, run over 1,000 kilometers. This is the only marathon event on the calendar and is followed by the ever-popular Sun City 400 in the Pilansburg. The Sun City 400 gets the second half of the season underway with next stops the 4x4 Mega World 400 at Carnival City on the East Rand and the Himan Auto 400 at De Brugge Military Base on the outskirts of Bloemfontein. The season ends in November at a venue still to be decided. Catch the action right here on Supersports.